Plugins, plugins, plugins. Everyone's so worried that they don't have enough plugins. If only I had more plugins, then my productions would sound pro. And uh, yeah, it's it's not true. So what I'm gonna do in this video is jump into my DAW. I'm gonna show you every single effects plugin that I personally own, and I'm gonna show you the ones that I actually use. And spoiler alert, it's not as many as I own. So let's jump into the DAW. Okay, so we are in the DAW, so what I'm gonna do is just go through specifically the effects plugins that I own. I'm gonna make another video where I'll actually dig into all the sample libraries that I own as well, because sample libraries are just, it's a completely different thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just find a track where there are no effects. As you can see here, there are no audio effects on this track. I'm just gonna open up and actually go through and just show you the actual plugins I use. So obviously all of these plugins on here are the Logic Pro plugins. I'm not gonna go through all the stock plugins because I do use a lot of stock plugins. I wanna focus more on the third party plugins because that's the stuff that you actually would have to buy. However, just to really, really, really quickly go through this, I personally love the channel EQ. I also love the tube EQ, the vintage tube EQ. Those are two EQs I use quite frequently. The compressors, I use the compressors within Logic. My personal favorite compressor within Logic is this classic VCA. It sounds awesome. It's a very smooth compression. I sometimes use the overdrive within the distortion here. I sometimes will use stereo delay within here. Um, and then the last thing is I do sometimes use chroma verbs. So as far as the logic stuff, those are kind of the main things that I use within logic. So let's go ahead and jump into the third party, the audio units here. Let's start at the top. The only thing I have from Artarius is Autotune Pro, which I do use. I actually only just started using Autotune Pro maybe a few months ago. Up until that point, I had been primarily using Flex Pitch. My workflow now when it comes to tuning vocals is using a combination of Autotune Pro and Flex Pitch. It just speeds up my workflow a huge amount. Now, I know that they have the graph mode within Autotune Pro. I personally just have not had the plugin long enough to have invested the time to actually learn how to use it. I will do that probably here pretty soon just to see if I like it more than using Flex Pitch. But personally for me, I've been using Flex Pitch for for so long that it's really, really pretty fast. Apple, I don't use any of these, and that's not third party anyway. Baby Audio, I am a huge Baby Audio fan. In fact, you can check out the video I have right up here. I made an entire video about Baby Audio. This this might be one of my all-time favorite effects. Plugin Company's Comeback Kid is their delay plugin. I don't use it a ton. Like, I'll just be completely honest with you. I really don't use it a lot. I use it some, but I've maybe only used it like, I don't know, three or four times ever. I Heart New York, I never use it. It's a New York style compression. I just don't, I never use it. Parallel Aggressor, I use Parallel Aggressor all the time. This thing is sick. I've talked about this plugin before on the channel. It is basically how you can get parallel compression without having to route anything. So basically it does all the routing within it. In fact, on this specific track, I actually use parallel aggressor on the drum bus, as you can see right here. Let's just go and play this. And on this particular side, I have the heat cranked up and you can see it kind of going crazy over here. That's what it sounds like soloed out. Mm. Add some nice grit and dirt. The spank is gonna make that transient come right through. I don't have that turned up quite as much in this particular track, I just didn't need it. But Parallel Aggressor is absolutely fantastic. I really, really love this plugin. It's one of those plugins that I actually think uh, if you want to really level up your drum game, I actually think it is definitely worth getting. Okay, let's move on to the next one within Baby Audio, and that is Smooth Operator. This one is the brand new plugin that Baby Audio has released, and to be completely honest with you, I've used it some, it works, but it's kind of hard to know what it's actually doing. So basically what Smooth Operator does is this right here is gonna be your threshold. It's going to be doing a combination of multiband compression, of EQ. Basically, as you crank this down and pull it down, it's going to work very, very aggressively to essentially carve out the sound to make it sound better. So you can use this on vocals, you can use this on drums, you can use it on any number of things. They have a lot of presets, which I really haven't jumped into much. But what you could do is, let's say for example, you want a lot of bass, you could crank that up. And this is going to basically retain these bass frequencies, whereas when I pull this down here and pull these down, this is going to be actually taming down even further on the high frequencies. I personally have not used this plugin a ton. Like I said, it's pretty new. This was kind of one of those plugins that at first I was like, I don't know why you would really use it, but it has grown on me. I've used it on vocals a little bit and it can work to clean up your vocals. That brings us to the next one, Spaced Out. I use this thing all the time. Spaced Out sounds incredible. It is a delay and a reverb all in one. I have talked about this in the video that I made about Baby Audio. So if you want to get a little bit of a deeper look into Spaced Out, you can definitely do that. Let let me just show you on, let's uh, do like a piano. Actually, huh, what do you know? I actually have it on this piano track here. So you can see here, I have it on this piano. Let me turn it off here.
Okay, so now let's turn it on. Here's what you can see. I'm actually just using the reverb. This middle control here is gonna control whether your, where your wetness level is. So on the right hand side, this is your reverb. On the left hand side, there's an algorithmic delay. For me, I typically use this as a reverb because the reverb just sounds super, super good. So here it is. So it gives you this super, super ethereal sound. And this is really cool too, because it has this ducker on it, which essentially is like side chain compression to the reverb or delay. So in other words, that as you turn the ducker up, whatever the signal is going through, it's actually gonna push down the reverb or the delay, depending on how you're using it. And then once it stops, it's gonna come back up, very similar to using side chain compression on your reverbs. I think it's actually really, really cool. So that is spaced out. I use that one a lot. That brings me to the last one, and that is Super VHS. I also use Super VHS a lot, um, particularly the magic button in here. It's gonna add a chorus sound. In fact, I, I'm sure I'm using this on this particular track here. Yep, so I've got this lead synth here, and that's typically what I end up using. So that's what I'm using this on. I have a lot of stuff on here, but you can see I actually did use some smooth operator on here. Um, I use some Super VHS. You can see really what I tend to use Super VHS for is cranking up this heat dial and then using the magic switch. So here it is without uh, Super VHS and I'll show you what it sounds like with it. So without it. Here is with it. It sounds super good. That magic switch in particular gives it this kind of wider chorusy sound. That heat adds this nice just, it, it adds heat to it. So I really look at the Super VHS plugin as a great way of taking a pretty stock sounding instrument and just really elevating it. I call it the stock killer, which is pretty funny because apparently the baby audio team calls it that as well. That's all the baby audio plugins. So as you can see, even out of those plugins, which I just told you, I love baby audio stuff, I'm really using only three of the six on a regular basis. Lander sessions, that's like not even effects plugin, so we're gonna skip that. All right, that brings us to native instruments. This is where I own the bulk of my stuff because, well, I just love native instruments. Absinthe 5, literally never used it before. Byte, don't use it. Coral, don't use it. Dirt, don't use it. Driver, I, I've used driver a couple times. It's a, it's a distortion plugin, but like a couple times, not a lot. Enhanced EQ, I do use enhanced EQ specifically for low frequencies. If there's a bassy sound that I want to really elevate and make sound more fat, I do typically use the boost on the low frequencies. I rarely use the cut because there are just other tools that I would use to cut rather than this particular one. But again, usually I'm only using this for boosting lows. And even then, like I would say out of like every 10 projects I work on, maybe like one or two of them, I would use that. Flare, I don't even know what it does. FM8, FX, multi VFX, don't, don't, Freak, never used it. Uh, guitar Rig 5 and 6, so 6 is the newest one. I do use Guitar Rig 6. So if I'm tracking guitars, I do use this. This is by far the best amp, amp simulator, guitar simulator effects uh, tool that I own. It is a thousand times better than the one built into Logic. Honestly, I think the, the guitar stuff built into Logic is really not that good. But you can use this for more than just guitars. I've actually used this on other stuff as well. You can use it on vocals, you could use it on synths, you could use it on any number of things. Basically, if you want guitar pedals, this is a really good tool for that. Passive EQ, no. Phasis, no. That brings us to Realm. I use Realm a ton. I do use Realm a lot. This is a fantastic sounding reverb. Um, I, a lot of times I'm gonna use this on vocals that I want the reverbs just to sound super, super big. You can see here actually my vocal reverb on this particular track, I have it on Realm. I personally like this like two to four second long delay mix all the way up. I typically add a little bit of a diffusion on there and then a lot of times I'm gonna do a high cut in, in particular for this track because it was a female vocalist on this particular session. But I use Realm all the time. I think Realm is a really, really, really good sounding reverb. So it's one of my go-tos. That brings us to RC24. I tend to use RC24 for like pianos and strings. It's just another reverb, just another option, just another flavor. With this one, I typically am just gonna find presets I like, whereas Realm, a lot of times I'll actually tweak it and tinker with it a lot more. RC48, pretty much never use it. Reactor 6, never use it. Replica, oh my gosh. Yeah, let's just do Replica XT because these are similar, but XT is just the kind of bigger one. This one I use on virtually every session. And usually what I do, because you have the different delay types here, you have modern, analog, tape, vintage, digital, diffusion, and stuff. So usually I'm using this diffusion mode. Let me just show you what this sounds like because it is stinking incredible. Let me just pull up. Let's take this piano sound. I'm gonna turn spaced out off on this particular sound. Let's open up Replica on it. And then I'm gonna go to diffusion mode. What I typically do is use it as a reverb. So what I'm going to do is set this to a straight 64th note because this is going to function almost more like a pre-delay. 
Now check this out. Without it? With it. I, I think it's such such a unique sound and it's pretty funny because a lot of my students use this because I talk about using it and whenever they use it I'm listening to feedback sessions for my students. I'm usually like, ah oh, yeah, you're using Replica. I love it. It sounds so good. Real quick, if you're a home studio producer or artist looking to level up your own productions, you need to check out my online music production course, Producer Accelerator. It's the ultimate online music production course or you can check out my free one hour workshop where I cover the seven keys to a pro home studio production. I actually dig through an entire session showing you what aspects you should be focusing on in your own productions. Link down below or you can check it up right over there. Back to the video. Uh, solid bus compression? No. Solid dynamics? No. Solid EQ? No. Supercharger? Sometimes. Is, is Supercharger GT is just like same thing but just bigger. Uh, sometimes on guitars I'll use Supercharger GT. This is what it looks like. I mean it's just like good guitar compression. Transient Master. Yes I use Transient Master all the time. Let me show you what I use Transient Master with. So I use it on drums almost entirely. So you can actually see here on my drum bus I actually have Transient Master pushing sustain and pushing attack. Let's just kind of go in here. Let me turn this off and let me show you what it sounds like. So that's what they sound like now. Let's turn Transient Master on. So this is really subtle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really crank this stuff up. I'm gonna turn the sustain up like a ton and I'm gonna turn it way down so you can kind of actually hear what this is doing. So you can really hear it in the kick, it's like boom, kind of giving it more sustain. The snare is getting more sustain. The hi-hat's not really changing a whole lot, but it's giving it like, I mean, it's basically like a type of compression. Let's turn the sustain like all the way down. It's, this is gonna be really radical. So that right there is like ex super, super extreme. Let's just put it back to 30% where it was. Now let's mess with the attack. I'm gonna turn the attack way down. It's gonna push it back. And that just kind of pushes it forward. And then gain is just your volume. So I use this a ton, especially if I have a snare sound that I really want that snare to have just like a nice splash on it and it just isn't quite doing it for me, I will use Transient Master 100%. That brings us to very comp, no, VC160, no, VT, VC2A, yes, you can see here on my vocals, this is like my go-to compression for vocals. You can see it everywhere. VC2A, VC2A, VC2A. I oftentimes will use this as a serial compression. So basically what that just means is that I'm going to add one layer of compression on it, doing some relatively mild compression. I don't know why, but my, my vocal like disappeared on this. So I can't show you the actual example here, but this is going to do a little bit of compression. And then I add it again to do another little bit of compression. So typically what I'm shooting for is between like, like three and eight dB of compression on the first one three to eight dB of compression on the second one. It really depends on the actual song, what I'm actually going for, but it has such a nice, smooth compression. It just sounds so good. It just really does. It's, so that's one of my favorite compressors is the VC2A by Native Instruments and then VC76, pretty much never use that one. That brings us to output. They only have three plugins. Movement, I do use movement. I'll just say the output plugins are kind of hard to use if I'm just completely honest with you. Pretty much my thought with using like portal and we're using movement, I'll talk about portal in a second, is just find presets and then kind of tinker with them. So if I just throw this on this piano sound that we've been looking at here, let's go ahead and solo this out. Let's just use movement and turn off that uh, reverb on it. It's called plucking around. It's what the first uh, preset sounds like. So it's doing a lot of crazy, crazy stuff with these four different controls. You can fully manipulate all of these. You can change the wetness and dryness and stuff there. You can use this X, Y uh, to control like how much of each of these different rhythms that you can use. You can obviously pull up all of your different things in here. So let's just go like, I don't know, different one here. So if that one's kind of cool. Uh, let's go to like Plux, brighten up. That's cool. SE8. Okay. 
And of course you can go in here and click in here and actually have all sorts of different manipulation controls. So this one has a little bit of a triplet rhythm, which I personally probably would not want. So I can go in here and change it to like a regular rhythm and all of that stuff. So movement all in all is a really cool plugin. Again, it's just kind of, kind of hard. So I usually use movement more when I'm like, I just want something interesting happening rhythmically here. And I will use movement to just kind of be more of a creative tool to kind of jumpstart ideas. And I, I honestly don't use it a ton, but when I do use it, it's usually there to just try to kind of add some extra sauce in, into the whole thing. Portal, I only recently got Portal. So to be completely honest with you, like I've just barely used it. It looks super sick, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like, I love that it has this particular layout here, all the different kind of presets you can look into. But again, I literally can't even tell you if I like it or not because I just, I literally recently got it. So thermal, I do use thermal. It's a really, really good sound distortion. This is probably one of the best sounding distortions that I found. Um, you could actually use this on things like drums, for example. Let's go ahead and throw it on the drum bus just so you can hear what this would actually sound like. Let's go ahead and kind of crank it over here. Without it, with it. There we go. Yeah. Without it, with it. So it's it's a really good sounding distortion. It has a lot of different controls. You can go into here. You can do like a bit reducer. You can do some shaping with it. You have some modulation controls. I actually really like this width control. I use this a lot. If I'm using this distortion on like guitars, I will add like some width to it. Let's just turn this on the drums. It'll probably sound kind of weird, but we'll see how it sounds. That's kind of cool. Oh, nice. Without it. So that's pretty sick. I mean, that's pretty dope sounding plugin. That brings us now to, that's all the output, Slate Digital Fresh Air. I use Fresh Air a ton. I mean, honestly, it's just one, it's just such a simple tool to use. Fresh Air sounds really fantastic. Let me actually use it on piano. You can even use it on pianos. You can use it on instruments. I know a lot of people think of Fresh Air as being primarily a vocal plugin, which I think on vocals, it sounds really good. I mean, this is like one of those plugins that you like open and you're thinking it can't be that easy. And it is, it just, it sounds incredible. If I just need an extra little bit of air, a little extra, you know, crank on the highs, that's gonna sound really natural. Fresh Air is my go-to and it's 100% free. So you can just go download it. You should go download it, it's free. That brings us to Sound Toys. Now, the only thing I have from Sound Toys right now is Effect Rack. Um, I actually do have other stuff, but it's all inside with Effect Rack anyway. So as far as Effect Rack goes, uh, within here you have Crystallizer. I never use it, so we'll just get that out of here. Decapitator, I use Decapitator a ton. Decapitator is a phenomenally amazing sounding plugin. I gotta say, it's, it's just incredible. You can do so much stuff with you can push some distortion on vocals. I push a distortion on synths. You can distort your drums. Um, I mean, you can literally do it in so many, so many awesome ways. It's got these different modes on here. You can change the brightness, the darkness. You can obviously crank the drive as high as you want. You can adjust the mix. So you can basically, what you can do is you can like distort like crazy, but then mix it in like very, very lightly. So you have this really heavy distortion, but it's only kind of blended in a little bit. So like, why don't I, why don't I actually show you what I'm talking about? I'll use on the drum bus again because well, it, it just fits really well on drums. So let's go to the chorus here. Let's go ahead and throw it on. Let's turn it off first. So again, this is what it sounds like. So let's go ahead and turn on Decapitator. Here we go. <laughs> so obviously that's like a menacing amount, but then watch this, that, that's with wetness at 100, but we can turn it down and blend it in. So here's 100% dry, so it's doing nothing. Without it now. You can really hear in that kick and that snare in particular where you have it, I've got it at, you know, drive level four, 50% mix. And then I actually really like different, some of these different modes here. They're all their own unique kind of subtle different modes and, and all of that. I don't know all the science behind it, but it sounds awesome. It's phenomenal. Devil Lock is another super sick one. I mean, this one is more for just like, if you just want like ridiculous, like just destruction. I mean, here's what it sounds like just right out of the box. So 
obviously you can just go like absolutely ridiculous with it. Uh, then there's Echo Boy. You know, I hear people talk about Echo Boy so much, but I've just, I, I don't actually use it. I know a lot of people love it. That's great, but I just haven't, I haven't really used it a ton. This next one is Echo Boy Jr. Same thing, never used it. Filter Freak, don't use it. Filter Freak, uh, again, what's this? Creative Resident, what's the difference between these two? Like, I literally don't even know the differences between these two because I, I just have like literally never used either of them a whole lot. I mean, I know what they do, but I've never really used them. Micro Shift, don't really use it. Pan Man, don't really use it. This Phase Mistress, don't really use it. Primal Tap, don't use it. Radiator, I do use Radiator. So Radiator is also really good on drums. Like a lot of these plugins I use on drums just because I love getting drum setting awesome. So let's just set mix to 50, here we go. Obviously that is like ridiculously extreme, but like this one is really good for vocals too. Like if you wanna add some nice like saturation, it's just a really good tool for just adding a nice amount of color. A lot of times Sound Toys also has like discounts on Little Radiator, which is what the first plugin I got from Sound Toys was. Also, if you're in my course producer accelerator, you get the academic discount for all sound toy stuff. Then I have PsyQ, I love PsyQ. This thing sounds awesome for pushing highs in particular for me and pushing lows. So a lot of times I'm gonna use this to boost highs, boost lows. I don't really ever use it for subtractive EQ, but I do use it a lot for additive. And then I oftentimes will also push on the drive here as well. But I do use this, I do use this. If it's like, hey, I just need like an extra something color wise here, I do use it. And then Tremolator, I do oftentimes use Tremolator. I do actually use this Tremolo. Um, I especially used it before I got the LFO tool, which I'm gonna get to here in just a second. But this is a good way of cheating some of that side chain sound. You can actually use Tremolo to do it, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much all the sound toy stuff that I have. That brings us to the last tool. Literally, that's it. Like th that's literally guys, like look at that. I, I have not even that much stuff. And then I have the LFO tool. The LFO tool is just absolutely sick. I'm not gonna use it in the drum boss, obviously. Let me find one that I actually use it on. So the lead synth I use it on. Oh yeah, yeah, this orchestral Arcus sound. Here it is. So this is basically just your pulsing tool. You can do so many ridiculous things with it. I mean, you can literally take this thing and just add like different points. You can drag things around. You can do so many ridiculous things with this. Like this, like let's just see what that would even sound like. Here we go. I mean, that's kind of cool. You can change the rate. Obviously this is on quarter notes right now. You can make this into an eighth note, 16th note, 32nd note, and you can go in here and you can do all sorts of just really, really crazy things. I mean, you can get this rhythmically, like if you wanted to, you could do some really, really, really crazy things. You can see all the different presets they have within here. Um, so a lot of times I'm just gonna use very, very simple side chaining type stuff, primarily for pulsing. It is such a time saver because then I don't have to actually use side chain to do that. So that is literally every single effects plugin that I actually own. And as you can see, I only use maybe like 25% of everything that I own. So if you are thinking, oh, I need all these plugins to make professional quality tracks, you don't. Because the truth is that if you go buy 100 plugins, you're realistically only going to end up using like 10 to 15 of those plugins on a daily basis. The reality is even the pros have their go-to plugins that they use on a regular basis. And no, you're not gonna be using a hundred different plugins on every single production. It's just not gonna happen. So don't think that you cannot create professional quality tracks with relatively basic plugins. You absolutely can. If you guys like this video, make sure you drop me a comment down below, subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. We'll see you in the next one.